What's up, everyone? Welcome to Eonian Gaming. This is your host, Roz. Before we begin, make sure you hit that like, share, and subscribe. You can find me on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, X, and Rumble, all at Eonian Gaming. You can also find me on Twitch at Roz Eonian Gaming. All right, guys, so this is going to be something very different from what I normally do. This is going to be that fabled Q&A that I threatened a couple of weeks ago. Um, I didn't get as many responses as I wanted to do an actual Q&A session. But I do still keep continuing getting questions. So I've uh, lumped together a lot of my questions that people have asked me uh, since I posted that. And even from the beginning. And um, it's been awesome. It really has been. Uh, the, I got a few questions here right now that I am going to answer. And it allowed me to interact with uh, some of my people who want to know more about Roz. So that's fantastic, too. Uh, if you do happen to jump into my Twitch channel, fire out a question, I'll write it down later. And if I don't answer it in the Twitch video, I'll bring it up in here, and I will talk to you about it in another video. So, do you want me to tell you the story of my life? Some of these questions are a little personal, but I said I would answer everything that anyone asked me. And... Um, there was no question that was off limits. So, um, I got a first question here is John from Stone Mountain, Georgia, which is a fantastic name, and it's a fantastic place. Um, Stone Mountain, Georgia is happens to be uh, the home place, or I guess the hometown, of one Jacob the Snake Roberts, uh, who was a wrestling icon in the 80s and 90s, and even today he's a legend. So, and John is a fantastic name because, you know, that's Roz's real name. So, but anyway, John has this question for me. What made you decide to start streaming and or recording? And there's a follow-up question there. How hard was it? Um, it uh, a lot of things happen in my life because I start talking. And when I start talking, I have a tendency to start formulating a plan while I'm talking it out. And while I'm doing this, it materializes over the course of days, weeks, months, whatever. Uh, this started a few years ago. I was talking about Roz Jr., who was watching all these streamers and stuff on YouTube, and I'm going to work. And I, I mean, I have a great job. I make decent money. But like, there's these people on YouTube that are making millions upon millions of dollars with their merchandise, their views, their subscriptions, etc., and me being me, I was like, well, you know what? I'm going to be doing a lot of this stuff anyway, so why not record it and see what happens? Uh, I mentioned it to a person that I worked with, uh, who worked for me, I guess is a better way to say it. But uh, Jesse, Beanbag, uh, over at Twitch, uh, me and him were talking about what you needed to do to start streaming, recording, etc. And he's like, oh, you need a capture card and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh, how much are those? And we started talking back and forth. and. Sorry, I needed a drink there. Started talking back and forth, and he went to lend me his capture card because he never used it at the time. And I got the capture card, and I brought it over here. I was all gung-ho. I was going to start recording, like, Castlevania right off the bat, and that was something I really um, wanted to do is, like, I want to beat Castlevania because that was the other thing, too, is I wanted to set a legacy for Roz Jr. that he would be able to eventually, I'm going to die. It happens. And I want Ross Jr. to be able to look back and, you know, oh, there's Dad. And my dad beat this game. My dad beat this game, you know. And he's really into gaming, too. So this whole series, this whole channel, everything was kind of uh, my own personal fortress of solitude for my own young Kal-El. Uh, so when gone am I, he can come back and listen to the words of his dad. And even maybe partake some wisdom from some of the things his dad says. So that is what started the genesis of me uh, wanting to record and stream and do what I've been doing for years. Just not doing the recording part of it. As far as, as, far as cost, um, it's trial and error. A lot of the stuff I've done was trial and error. Uh, I bought a fairly decent PC. Um, 
and I bought the capture card, and I was ready to go. And then because when I do PC game, I had to buy um, a quality gaming mouse and gaming keyboard, too. So I had to do that, too. That's not necessarily needed for it, but anytime I PC game, a.k.a. World of Warcraft, I like to be, have my shit working right. Um, after that, it's trial and error, folks. Like, you want a headset? Get a headset. You use the mic off of it. If you want to do what I do and use my headset for audio only, and as you can see, that my is never used. Um, I have an additional auxiliary microphone that I use. Uh, lighting was something that I was not expecting being a problem. Uh, so I had to buy a ring light, and I use that to various degrees. As you can see, the glare of the um, monitor off my glasses. Uh, I'm not a high quality, high performance, super content creator on YouTube by any means. So mine's as basic as it comes. So, uh, I mean, initial investment to start streaming. Twitch is free. YouTube is free once you get everything set up. Um, I mean, you get an email. I mean, it's free. It's a, you get an email and get a, make a channel name. Computer, the PC is a pretty vital thing. The L, but it doesn't have to be a super quality one. Like, I spent probably about a thousand dollars on my PC. Yours does not need to be this way. If you want to do, like, I have bells and whistles on mine that I don't even know what they're for. I am not a computer guy, and I know that's really weird hearing that, but I am not. So, you can get away with a regular computer. I do recommend a uh, tower one, not like an all-in-one. Uh, you will need a capture card. So, whatever the cost of the computer is, the capture card is right around $150 to $200. Uh, I bought mine when they were $150. I bought an Elgato. Uh, that is the standard capture card out there. Uh, it's quality. Had it for three years. Been running it for three years. Haven't had any real problems that I haven't been able to troubleshoot. Uh, the next thing you want to do is once you start on that, download OBS and start working with that. Do not use the actual software the Elgato sends. It's terrible. And I want to throw a shout out to Mike over at Turn of the Century Gaming. He's the one that got me over onto OBS as opposed to Elgato, so, or using the Elgato software. So thank you there as well, Mike. Appreciate that as well. So, John, I hope that answers your question. If it's something you're looking forward to, or if it's something you're looking to do, you have questions, uh, reach out to me, man. I will be more than willing to partake whatever limited knowledge I have in the matter. And honestly, you're going to, like, I'm going to tell a story here real quick here, John, about one of the ideas I had. So, I had this um, idea that I was going to do maybe movie reviews, too. And I even created another channel, and that's actually... A question that somebody asked me, too. But I was going to uh, do movie reviews and stuff and kind of critique movies. And I had this idea where I was going to... Um, Jesse Beanbag, who was the actual genesis of this, whenever I was talking to him. He uh, is a few years younger than me. And by a few, I mean like 22. Uh, <laughs> but I wanted to make... I wanted him to watch movies that I watched as a kid and see what his honest reaction were to it. Because some of those movies from the eighties and nineties are absolutely cringeworthy. And then there's some that still hold up and are really, 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 really fucking good. And that was kind of the Genesis of it. So for me to be able to do that, you have to find a way to strip the HDCP, which is uh, basically an anti pirating copying program. Well, I found a way to do it. And Long story short, it, made, it took like four trips to a local store, and I'm not, I work for this local store, and they're not sponsoring me, so I'm not going to mention their fucking name. But, um, I ended up making four trips up there, and Mike, uh, he's like, really? And like, so what I did was, I got an analog converter. I got, that would transfer HDMI signal into an analog component cable. Then, I got another, um box that will convert analog to HDMI. And by running your output from your whatever system you're using through that mechanism and into the capture card strips the HDCP. So uh, I just taught you how to you know, do bad things. 
but a lot of that was trial and error and a lot of that was me talking through the problem all right i need to do this what can i do so that is it if you have any uh i hope i answered your question john thank you for that now the next question is from dave from jonesboro tennessee uh, Dave will ask me, uh, what is your favorite game series and why? Oh my god, that is a, that's a really good question. And I'm kind of glad that I did this uh, as I got the questions throughout time and not just write them down and then like immediately record because I didn't remember this question. So you're getting a really um, like off-the-cuff answer here because I really didn't read over the questions before I didn't read over the questions before I started this video so but anyway favorite game series and why it's really hard for me to choose um, a lot of series that I play on my channel are fantastic games and they're some of my favorite series of games I love Castlevania I am a huge Castlevania fan I like a lot of Konami games. Uh, Konami was really big in the 80s. They produced the best games. They were one of the best publishers for the original NES. I don't want to say they produced the best games. But they were one of the best um, third or third party publishers. They had Contra. They had the Castlevania series. They, uh, they were really, really fucking good. I don't know. Metal Gear, that was another one they had. Well, Ultra but also Metal Gear. Uh, they had some really good games. So Metal Gear I've played. I like Metal Gear. Um, Mike over at Turn of the Century Gaming is a huge Metal Gear nerd. He knows more. He's he's forgotten more about Metal Gear than I will ever know. So there's that. But I do like a lot of Konami games. Capcom released a lot of games too that were really good. They had the Disney license back in the... Um, 80s so they had all the disney games plus they had the Mega Man series and street fighter and like they were a really good publisher too plus nintendo themselves published some really good games back then and uh like the mario brothers themselves uh as a fan as a good series um and then square uh when they released final fantasy and enix who when they released uh dragon warrior which now it's funny because now it's square enix it's hard for me to pick one because, uh, oh, also Nintendo with not just the Super Mario Brothers, but Legend of Zelda series and Metroid. Uh, so you have all these great series that came out right when I was getting into video games in the 80s. I mean, I played Atari, but like whenever I went to a friend's house, and I don't remember what year it was, it must have been 86, 87, but I went to a friend's house and he had a Nintendo. I didn't know what a Nintendo was until I saw this. And I'm like, oh, holy shit. You can play home you can play fucking arcade games on your TV. That's fucking wild. Mom, I need a fucking Nintendo. I didn't say that, but I mean I might as well have. Um so when those this game came out or this system came out in the 80s, you had all these launch titles for a series that were fantastic. Uh, as I got older, the Castlevania series continued. The Final Fantasy series continued. Um, and then I got into other games, too, that were fantastic, too. Lucas uh, Lucas Films and JVC, uh, they started releasing um, games, too. Uh, like Shadowgate, and, or they didn't release Shadowgate, but they released Maniac Mansion. And then the Star Wars games, which were fantastic, because I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. Um... And then they came out with new games, new franchises too. You had like the Legend of Mana series. You had, um, and they took it to different directions too. Like they took Mario into an RPG realm, which I'm currently playing and kind of fucking hating. But they, the thing with Nintendo is the colors are always so bright and the picture, the pixels always like pop, especially with the Nintendo published games. Uh, Star Tropics from the original NES too. Like it's hard for me to pick. Because each series gives something that the other series, or the, another series doesn't. Uh, Resident Evil is not one of my favorite series. I just had a person pop up into Twitch here, uh, so uh, thank you for that. But yeah, I'm I'm not a huge Resident Evil fan. I have played them, but they're not one of my huge. Uh, 
huge uh, series I am. If I was put on a spot, like flat out, like you need, like gun to the head, you need to decide which um, series is your favorite. I'm going to say, without a doubt, it's going to be the Legend of Zelda series. I feel each game has changed just enough to make it feel like a new game. And I haven't played one that was terrible. I can't say that about Mario now. Uh, Mario RPG is driving me up the wall. Final Fantasy, love them to death. But if they get so convoluted. Like you need to be thinking in 4D uh, to do that. Mega Man's have always been fun platformers, but that's all they've ever really been is fun platformers. Um, Castlevania, because it died out a few years ago. If Castlevania was still a regular series, I think that might be my favorite series, but because it is no longer a thing, it is not continuing, it is not a live series, no pun intended since in Castlevania you hunt Dracula. Um, I'm going to have to go with Legend of Zelda, uh, from the original, and then they changed it drastically into two. And then they changed it again for a Link to the Past. And then Ocarina of Time was fantastic. Majora's Mask. Wind Waker was a brand new direction. Um, then they went to Twilight Princess, Skyward Sword. Breath of the Wild. I have never played one that was bad. They're all fun. They're all challenging enough to keep your interest. So I'm going to say Legend of Zelda. So uh, I hope that answers the question, Dave. Thank you. And uh, if you have any more questions, by all means. Fire a tweet or fire DM me on Twitter or just shoot me a message or even throw it in the comments. I don't care. All right, next we got Jesse from Paulsbo, Washington. Is Roz your real name? No, I answered that question two questions ago. My real name is actually John. Uh, I go by Roz for a very specific reason, and it's a very specific reason why my channel is named the way it is. Uh, I talked a lot about uh, my friend Ice from Warcraft. Her real name's Rita. Uh, love her to death. Probably the best gaming experience I've ever had in my entire life was playing games with this woman. I have never met her in real life, but we have been Facebook friends, MySpace friends. We have been friends for 10 goddamn, 10 plus goddamn years. For real. Uh, I can't say enough nice things about her. She is probably one of the nicest, greatest human beings I've ever met, and I have never met her. But I have talked to her, and she is fantastic. Um, but when we played together, Roz was my gamer name in World of Warcraft. And they just referred to me as Roz all the time in Vent. And at any time I um, play a game, I use Roz because that's been my gamer tag forever now, 10 plus years. Also, um, it feels weird if I have my headset on and I refer to myself as John. So... I say Roz a lot. Uh, I refer to myself as Roz. Uh, it's in the, my channel's name. I'm going to throw that in there too. We were in a guild called Eonian Animus. It me, that means Eternal Souls in Latin. I took Eonian from it because Eternal Gaming is kind of what I do, and it's just kind of a nice tribute to Ice, aka Rita. So that is where that comes from, Jesse. So thank you for the question there. Uh, we got Noah from Gorlitz, Germany. That's fucking wild man you must be the guy you must be my one german subscriber like i look at the demographics of my youtube and stuff i get um i get uh like notifications where people are from you know like most of my base is in the uh, uh, united states but i do have a couple people in uh europe and i have a couple in australia too which is wild which are predominantly english-speaking countries and then i got one in germany like one one single guy in germany so it's wild with the uh, analytics with uh, my channel and stuff, but it's really cool. If you are my subscriber, Noah, nice. Thank you for sending a uh, message in. If you are not my subscriber, Noah, please become one. Um, you asked the question, why do you start a series and never finish it? Ah, that's, that's a great question. I love that question. Uh, a lot of the times is I don't remember. The game is not as fun as I remember it being. I also am 46 years old. I need you to understand that. My reflexes on these two thumbs 
is not as good as it was 33 years ago when I was 13 or 10 or 36 years ago when I was 10 you know um, when you get age a lot of your reflexes start to go and stuff I'm not a terrible gamer but I am definitely not a pro gamer and sometimes the games especially the NES games I can't do it I physically cannot do it um, I have to get I guess I can, I mean I don't want to say I can't because I probably can but if I'm bashing my head against the wall for two straight hours trying to kill Dracula's second form in the original Castlevania because I don't have a fucking jar of holy water or enough hearts to do it, I can't do it. So that is why. Uh, for my sanity, I abandon the game series. And then I go back to it and try it again, and then I abandon it again because same reason. Uh, we got Anna here from Conway, New Hampshire. You ask me, in some of your videos, you mentioned your ex-wife and then sometimes an ex-girlfriend. Why? Huh. So, why do I talk about my exes on my channel from time to time? Uh, a lot of times, I... Okay, I'm going to throw this out here. Mental health awareness plug. I suffer from depression, anxiety, and a bunch of fucking neuroses. I got psychological damage, like, all the way up to fucking here. Okay. So, a lot of times whenever I go to counseling, and I do do counseling, I'm not medicated, but I do counseling, I find that it's once I start talking about a problem that's bugging me, I feel better. And a lot of times it just pops into my head, so I'll just start talking out loud because that's how I, that's how I process things, that's how I deal with things. I'll start talking myself through a process whenever I hit a roadblock. And I can usually talk myself through said problem. Um, so I just start talking about them because a lot of stuff that, you know, has gone on between me and some of my exes still hurts. And it's uh, things that will, you know, occasionally come up every now and then because somebody somewhere will tell me, did you know what so-and-so is doing? Or do you know what so-and-so is doing? And I'm like, I don't give a shit, but they'll tell me. And then I'll hear about it. And now it's like fucking... Like a little uh, Scott's claws in the back of my brain, it starts eating at me, and I'm like, God damn it, and then I have to start talking about it. And you know what, honestly, I don't give a shit. Uh, I'm going to be 100% uh, honest here with this. I don't give a shit if they like it or not. I don't use their goddamn names, and if you want to know who they are, you know, if you know me in real life, you can pretty much figure it out who I'm talking about when I talk about which person. That being said, um,. You know, you guys are an audience, and I'll put it out there. I'm not going to sugarcoat shit. I'm not going to hide behind it. Oh, no, John's hurt because a so-and-so did this to him. Well, you know what? Yeah, it fucking hurt. You know, I gave this person a shot. I thought it was going to go somewhere, and they fucking stomped on, you know. I'm not I'm not a saint. Don't get me wrong. I'm not a fucking saint. I never, I never said that Roz is the perfect boyfriend. If you do believe that Roz is a perfect boyfriend, please send me a message, though. Just DM me. Uh, that would be fantastic. But otherwise, um, no, I, I, it's sometimes I talk about shit. Uh, you don't like, you know, everybody like, oh, no, Taylor Swift wrote a song about her ex-boyfriend. I'm not writing a song. I just work it through a problem. That's pretty much the only reason I mention them. It's bugging me. I need to get it off my chest. Boom, done. All right, we got Ashley from Farmville, Virginia. Now, this one I do remember. I do remember this one. Because I, when I wrote this one down, I was like, this is fucking bullshit. There is no Farmville, Virginia. Guess what, folks? I fucking looked it up. There is, in fact, a Farmville, Virginia. That is the best fucking name of a city ever. I may move there, Ashley. I may not. I may not. I bet if I'm going to... Actually, you know what? When Ross Jr. grows up and he moves out of the house, I may relocate to Farmville, Virginia. Because that's such a fucking great name. I don't know what goes on there. I didn't look into it that much, but such a great name. Uh, but Ashley asks, what is your favorite song? Favorite song is like asking me which is my favorite breath of air. Every song that I have ever heard in my entire life has been fantastic. I have never heard a bad song. Now, do I like all songs? No. But all songs are great. 
I am a huge music fan, but I cannot pick my favorite song. I can't even pick my favorite artist. It changes so much. It, it, it It's not that it changes because um, I dislike what their music or their, you know, it's my mood. That's what changes. Some days I'm a huge, I'm the biggest Tom Petty fan you'll ever meet. There's other times I'm the biggest Queen fan you'll ever meet, and I'll be like, fuck that Tom Petty guy. Sometimes I love Metallica. Sometimes I don't. Ozzy, Fleetwood Mac, Led Zeppelin, Zach Wilde, Black Label Society, uh, The Birthday Massacre recently, The Naked and Famous, uh, Stevie Nicks, oh my god, who else? Megadeth, can't forget Megadeth, Megadeth, ACDC. I can't pick one. They are all amazing for various reasons. So, no. Um, I'm not going to even... I'm not even going to try to narrow that one down. So, uh, thank you, Ashley. But I cannot answer that question. That's the first question I can't actually answer. And it's not because I don't want to. It's because I literally can't. I can't actually answer that question. So, thank you. Uh, We got... Who do we got here? We got Ken from Boston. Is that your Christmas tree up? Yeah, it's been up, Ken. You were one of the first people to actually message me and ask the question. And this was back in October. Uh, I almost always put my Christmas tree up in October. Uh, I love Christmas. Christmas is my favorite holiday. Uh, It always has been. It always will be as far as I know. Uh, But I love Christmas. uh, So... There it is. That Christmas tree's been up. Uh, there has been an unfortunate side effect of the Christmas tree going up. Every year I put up the Christmas tree, somebody dies. Like a celebrity dies. One year I killed Tom Petty. And I hate myself for that. Three years ago I killed Eddie Van Halen. I swear to God, I swear to God, I put this tree up, someone dies. Matthew Perry was this year's victim. Just saying. So, thank you, Ken. And uh, can't wait to find out which celebrity I get next year. We got Amy from Norfolk, Virginia. Who is your hero slash idol? Ooh, that's a good question, Amy. Thank you. Uh, really good question. That's actually digging deep into Raza's soul. And... I'm gonna I'm gonna take a drink here and I'm gonna start in on who is my hero and or idol. Um, obviously, in my family, my dad, my granddad, um, they taught me who to be a man, how or how to be a man. But as far as like who is like that's a, that feels like a cop out. So who do I like who's famous that what is my hero idol? Uh, you guys know I'm a huge professional wrestling fan. And honestly, there's a professional wrestler who has been my hero in his life. I mean, I hate to say this, but it kind of mirrors mine a lot. And um, that is that would be Shawn Michaels. Um, he has some backstage... Um, stuff that he's not too proud of his past but you know he uh, he's hard to be around Uh, let's put it that way he has this thing where he's hard to be around he always feels that he knows what's best he always feels he's right and he's going to ram that down your throat until you either agree with him or he throws a temper tantrum and then you're going to have to deal with it anyway that describes me almost through most of my younger years. Like from 13 until 13 until um now. <laughs> no, I I can be very hard to be around and so could he. So a lot of that um a lot of that worked out that way. Uh another thing too is he got really 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 into drugs when he was younger. And I kind of did too. I'm not proud of it, but I did. And I I quit. I kind of hit a reckoning point, you know, with my life and stuff with that. And I hit, I didn't quit for the same reason he quit, but I quit because I wanted to not be that person anymore. 
No, I didn't go to rehab. No, I didn't need counseling for that. I just fucking quit. I had enough. And that's kind of how, from what I understand, how he quit drinking and doing, you know, pills and stuff. So our lives were kind of similar there. Uh, reasons were different, but very similar there. Um, another thing that happened is he became a born-again Christian, and so did I. He uh, hit rock bottom, and uh, so did I. I hit rock bottom, and I did. I hit rock bottom. Uh, it was a, like this should not come as a shock, but I was I was at the point where uh, something very bad was about to happen to me, and my parents suggested I go to talk to their pastor, and I did. And it brought me back. It was like it, and like Shawn Michaels will tell the story where he was at rock bottom and his wife was really into religion and he walked in into this Bible study that her church was doing and one of the deacons or elders came up to him and was like, do you want to accept Jesus Christ into your life? And he broke down. He's like, I, I want that very much. That's not exactly how it happened with me, but it also kind of is. I was going through my divorce, and I was at rock bottom. I Bad things were about to happen to me, like very bad things, uh, so much so that this series would never have happened. You can take it for what it's worth with that innuendo there. I started talking to a pastor. I started going to church. I started getting more and more involved. I don't get to go to church very often anymore. My work uh, and stuff gets in the way a lot but I still do read the Bible almost daily I pray every day and the beer between his like even reading his book um, his his books were his one book was really good but his second book was amazing it was wrestling for my life and he talks a lot about that so yeah if you want to know if you want to know who my personal famous hero is it's Shawn Michaels um Man, we even had the same hairstyles back in the day. I had a fucking killer mullet growing up whenever he had his long hair, and now we're both fucking bald as a fucking baby's butt, rocking the stubble beard. So, yeah, um, as far as that goes, uh, but as far as family, my dad, uh, my dad is absolutely amazing. We always didn't get along, shocker, uh, as Roz uh, tells you that he sometimes is not the most easy person to get around. I don't think my dad and I talked for a few years at one point. But uh, my dad is my hero. My dad has helped me out so much uh, in the past, in my entire life. I, I can't stress that enough. And my, his dad, too, my granddad, absolute salt of the earth. Amazing men. And if I can live up to being half of who they are, I'd say I lived a pretty good life. So, thank you, Amy. We got... Oh, this is a good question here. So we got Karen from Harrisburg, PA. Hi, Karen. Uh, this is funny because Harrisburg is only about a five-hour drive away from me. I live in PA as well, so I live on the western side, though. But Karen, thank you um, for the question. And your question is kind of a... It's kind of a question after a statement. So it is, you have said some controversial things on your channel. Aren't you worried about being canceled? Well, <laughs> first off, uh, I'm not big enough to be canceled, so no. Uh, long story short, no. Uh, second thing is I don't feel cancel culture is... I feel cancel culture is detrimental to society as a whole. And I'm going to tell you why that is. So, as long as I don't go off on a racial tangent, which you will never, ever hear me do, because there isn't a racist bone in my body, or, you know, go off on something, like, way over the line, and I will tiptoe up to that line, but I'm not going to cross it. But I think it's because, I think she's asking because more so because of my, uh, pro-Republican, anti-Democrat um, rants that I've gone on on my channel. Why am I all blurry all of a sudden? Whoa, I got, I got worse there. 
Okay. There I am. I'm back in focus. All right. No, I, it's more my uh, pro-Republican, anti-Democrat rants that I go on. Um, if you don't like it, that's fine. Okay? You don't have to like my opinion on things. Everybody has an opinion, and they're like assholes. Everyone has one, and they all stink. But I want to talk about Tom Hanks here, and I'm going to talk about Tom Hanks for a very specific reason. Okay? Tom Hanks is about as far left as an actor can get. Okay? And I watch his movies. Why? I don't agree with his political viewpoints. But I am not going to deprive myself of watching him in Apollo 13, or Forrest Gump, or Philadelphia, or any of the other movies he's done, um, or The Burbs, which is my favorite movie of his. I like Dragnet too, but I, I'm not going to deprive myself of his movies just because I don't like what he says. I don't watch Joe vs. the Volcano. I don't like that movie. It's not because I don't like Tom Hanks. I don't like Tom Hanks' opinions on a lot of things. But I'm not going to deprive myself of his movies because I don't like what he has to, th the way he thinks. So, I mean, if you want to cancel me because of the way I, my political views, by all means, don't watch my channel. The problem with cancel culture, what, another reason why I think it's detrimental is if I do end up getting canceled... There's a whole other group of people that I don't really want to be associated with that'll pick me up all immediately. Um, as a Republican, you may find I am probably the farthest left thinking Republican there is out there, but I'm still a Republican. And but I'm still way farther right than any Repo uh, Democrat will let a Republic or let a Democrat be. I do not believe. Let me rephrase this. How should I want to? I want to say this in a way that's not going to get me into a world of trouble. I don't agree with the uh, protests that happened on January sixth. I think Donald Trump is, was a fantastic president. I also think he was a terrible president as well. For every good thing he did, it was negated by something else. Okay. Um. I think Joe Biden's a goddamn terrible president. If you don't want to watch my channel because of those opinions, that's your choice. But you're depriving yourself of entertainment. If you like what I've had to say, but you don't like what my beliefs are, that's fine. I also challenge you that as soon as that happens, you start, you start boycotting whoever else has different opinions to you. So... That is my opinion on that, Karen. Thank you for the question. Uh, and so, long story short, no, I'm not worried about being canceled. Bree from Fort Wayne, Indiana asks, Why don't you edit your videos? Honestly, why I don't edit my videos. The reason I don't edit my videos is the exact same reason why this channel was created. It was a very raw visceral thing that I pulled out of nothing and a conversation with Jesse and while through the course of our conversation I decided that a lot of stuff is sanitized um homogenized whatever however you want to describe it but it, there's a lot of things in this world that are sanitized and deemed not fit for consumption I'll have dead air where I walk off camera and forget I'm doing this I'm putting it in there. I'm a human being. And as I say, I'm doing this more for Roz Jr. than anybody else. So if you like my stuff, by all means, like my stuff. If you don't like my stuff, don't. But I'm doing this for Roz Jr. And I'm putting this out here for him so he has his discs that he can say hi to his dad or listen to his dad whenever his dad is long gone. So that's why I don't edit my stuff. Plus, occasionally, I come up with some great stuff. Occasionally. So you should watch it, even if there is dead air. So that is it for the questions that I got. I appreciate everybody who sent me questions, comments, everything. Thank you. Thank you all. 
Uh, don't forget, guys, if you like this video, make sure you hit that like, share, and subscribe. You can find me on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, X, TikTok, Rumble, all at Eonian Gaming. And you can also find me on Twitch at Roz Eonian Gaming. Until next time, guys, later taters.